Hello there, and welcome back to The Closet Historian, and back to another vintage show and tell. Now we all know that haul videos are kind of cringy and uh, are past their prime, as it were, but I, I love looking at vintage costume jewelry, so I figure you also love looking at vintage costume jewelry. I mean, you clicked on this video. I think you and I are in this one together. And what happened here was I went back to my favorite antique mall recently to pick up a brooch. I'll show you the brooch in a minute. And there was a sticker on the uh, jewelry case at my favorite antique mall that said, 50% off. And already I was like, oh no, <laughs> because I went to grab one thing, but at 50% off, there was no way I wasn't going to be able to look at all the other things. And then I asked to see something in the case and the man with the keys said, oh, actually everything in this case has just gone down to 70% off. And now you understand why I have a few things to show you today. But the reason I was at the antique mall was to grab the brooch that matches these earrings. I picked these earrings up, I'll show you a close up, a couple of months ago. I was thinking I needed a pair of red, need, <laughs> wanted a pair of red rhinestone earrings to wear in the shine lookbook, which I didn't end up wearing these earrings in that lookbook. So I popped into the antique mall a couple weeks ago to try and find the matching brooch for those earrings. I was going to collect the pieces kind of over the next year here, trying to, you know, be reasonable or something. Um, and so I grabbed the matching brooch. This is what I wanted to see in the case when it was hypothetically 50% off. Now the earrings are unsigned, but this brooch is signed Kramer and the more sought after and collectible pieces of this style are made by those big few companies, Weiss, Kramer, Judy Lee, and Juliana. Um, of course, there actually are some Scaparelli pieces in a similar style to this, but those are <laughs> in a different price zone because all Scaparelli is extremely collectible. But here was the matching Kramer brooch that goes very well with those earrings. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, they are exceedingly similar but I'm not sure they're actually meant to match. The earrings, of course, again, are unsigned, so uh, they match perfectly, in my opinion, but not down to the very last detail. I, of course, will wear them together because I just want it to look like it matches. It doesn't actually have to be the same brand. I don't really mind. And although I do collect this style of jewelry and many styles of vintage jewelry, nearly all styles of vintage jewelry, I don't actually care about designer names. I just collect what I like. So if something is unsigned or signed, it doesn't matter to me other than the fact that sometimes the signed pieces go for a lot more money, but I'm not collecting to sell usually. I'm collecting to wear and to keep for myself and be a dragon hoarder. So um, the fact that this is signed Kramer had no like bearing on whether or not I wanted to get it. Of course, I just wanted to get it to match the earrings. But once the friendly antique store employee let me know that everything was 70% off, of course, I started looking through every single shelf in these display cases to see what there was for 70% off. Because <clears throat> that made most everything I'm about to show you today uh, $20 or under, at least. And the signed pieces do go for around $60 or $70, sometimes up to $150 online. So uh, I know what the value of these things is in the collector's market, I suppose, or I, I try and keep abreast of the collector's market value of these things and therefore I knew I was getting such a good deal on them that it was hard to pass anything up honestly especially more unique pieces like this one so this looks like a blue rhinestone brooch and it is a blue and silver toned rhinestone brooch but this has something called lava glass rhinestones so these rhinestones are a little bit rarer than just your regular rhinestones these are usually called lava glass they have an ab finish in this case and um, sometimes called art glass pieces as well and then these thinner rhinestones here are called navette rhinestones, I believe is what the name for those are. And the ones on this brooch are actually an, or more of an opaque or opaline style glass as well, which again is a tiny bit rarer than the clear colorful glass. So this particular brooch had a lot going for it. I didn't have anything in light blue rhinestones like this in my collection. And I have been so interested in iridescence and AB lately. So it really fit in with my current uh, wants and desires, as well as being a unique and slightly larger piece. The style of brooch doesn't really exceed this size, sort of like half palm size often. So the larger the pieces are, the more I'm interested in them because we all know I love a giant brooch. So this one just really caught my eye and had to come home with me for that 70% off. And I do still need to find earrings to match this. I'll talk about a few pieces today that I, of course, immediately once I came home, started looking to find, see if I could find bargain matches for these things. We all know how I like to have matchy matchy sets. Another brooch I picked up that is signed is this Judy Lee piece. This has clear rhinestones in a gold toned setting with a sort of leaf background etched with a little bit of detailing, but it's clear rhinestones, AB rhinestones, and then again, that sort of lava glass the rhinestone piece. Again, this is a little on the small side for me. I know, I just love a giant brooch, but I think it is so pretty. And again, it's AB, which I have been so interested in lately. I want to collect something that is an AB in silver for when I'm wearing silver, and then AB with gold for when I wish to wear gold as an accent color. Again, me and my matchy matchy, matchy, matchy tendencies and my Pokemon sensibility of wanting to catch them all. 
like one of each color out there in color combination. This again seemed like a rather unique and special piece to me and for $12 or whatever it came to, I had to have it. And I luckily was able to find the matching earrings online. So these are the matching clip earrings for that brooch. Again, these ones are signed Judy Lee. They have the exact same leaf finish and setting and all that jazz. The art glass on this is a tiny bit less iridescent. I think it's lost some of its finish over the ages, but seeing as they are signed Judy Lee and they, they do look to be ex an exact match other than that art glass having lost its finish a bit. So they're not in the best of condition, but they're still highly wearable and they match perfectly, so I'm happy about that. I found these earrings to match that brooch by typing in on Etsy Judy Lee earrings and just looking through everything that came up until I found the matching set. And there were only one pair like this available. Luckily, they were under $20. So I went ahead and picked them up to match that brooch. And though, again, I intend to keep and wear these pieces eventually if I do end up downsizing my collection, which you never know, you I may have to do. They are a good investment because of course no one is making more vintage jewelry and they do go for more when you have the set like that. Now while a lot of things in this booth were appropriately priced I guess or um, like at market value and then of course 70% off of that there were some things that were underpriced to begin with and then 70% off. So things like this where the earrings were only $14 to begin with and then 70% off there was no way I could resist items like that. So these are a light purple opaline glass and amethyst and AB rhinestone gold tone set clip earrings. These ones are unsigned, but again, are in this same sort of prong set style of rhinestone jewelry piece from the 50s or 60s. Probably again, Juliana Judy Lee, this sort of brand, but I just thought the color was very pretty. And I will of course continue looking for a brooch to match with these, a brooch or a necklace because having earrings, it's nice to have something else to match them and wear with these in the future. Another set of earrings I picked up just because the price was too right to pass up were these Montana blue and dark red rhinestone earrings. Uh, Montana blue is the color of this rhinestone. Sometimes we go by the Swarovski color. Sometimes they just seem to have color names, um, but that's usually what this particular navy blue kind of colored rhinestone is called. And again, these are unsigned, but of the exact same style once more. These were such a nice large size. And of course we'll be looking for a brooch to pair with these. Now diving into the bracelets I was able to pick up from this stall. First, we have this black rhinestone and AB rhinestone in a gold tone setting bracelet. This one is something I've seen other pieces from the set come up on Etsy beforehand. So I had seen this set before and knew other pieces existed out there that I might be able to collect and fill in the set around this. And I actually have already picked up the clip-on earrings that match this. And I'm hoping to grab the brooch and then hopefully, I've never seen the necklace, but I assume there is one out there. So hopefully one day I'll be able to add the necklace to this full set as well. But of course I wear black so often and I wear iridescence so often that seemed that this seemed a very practical piece in my wardrobe, as practical as something like this can possibly be. Another exceptionally affordable sale piece I found was this bracelet. This bracelet here, uh, probably from the 1940s. It could be as late as the 60s, but it seems a little bit more sort of like that late deco uh, machine age kind of 1940s look to me. It has like a spring wire inside. This bracelet was marked as $3 and then it was 70% off. So uh, real deal on this one. And I, it's a little bit loose and silly down here, but look how pretty this is if you wear it higher up. Oh, I just think it looks so nice as a more of like a cuff and you could wear it up even further on the arm. I just think that's super elegant and it makes me feel like Wonder Woman or something or some sort of like Greek goddess kind of look. I think it's super pretty and fun and cannot wait to wear this one out and about, especially seeing as I got it for such a steal. A truly magnificent AB rhinestone piece was this one. This is a extremely sparkly AB bracelet. This one still has a safety chain on it as well, though again, it is unsigned. This is in a chromed sort of silver setting, silver plated setting, I assume. And it does, does again have nice prong set rhinestones and this absolutely stunning AB finish on all these rhinestones. I of course, again, have been making a lot of iridescent things and this matches all the rest of the AB finished both clothing and accessories in my collection. And so I was, had been on the lookout for an AB bracelet in a silver setting like this for a while. So I'm super happy to have found one, something I was actually on the radar for and to get it for 70% off, it doesn't get better than that. Another bracelet that was just too cool and too inexpensive to leave behind was this buddy. This, I think they only had marked it again, like $20 before the 70% off. So very inexpensive to pick up. It is probably just base metal and it does again, look a little bit older than the rest of these items. A lot of this again is late fifties and sixties jewelry. This looks much more forties to me with this geometric sort of design. This does seem to have a little bit of damage, but funny enough, it is marked sterling on the back. So I might be able to give this a good polish. If you ask me, I think they mean sterling plated because it seems that the plating has eroded in some areas, but in any case, 
I really like this. The fact that it's not pristine doesn't bother me at all. So this bracelet ticked a lot of boxes for me stylistically, and it was at such a great price that I just had to add it to my basket. And yes, this sale was like better than Christmas coming home with all of these goodies. Second to last bracelet I have to show you is again, another sort of unique color of rhinestone piece. This one is unsigned as well. I didn't think so, um, but it has a faux opal rhinestone going on here. So we have a couple of amethyst rhinestones and a little bit of filigree going on to this boulder chain. And then we have these fake fire opal, or again, art glass sort of cabochons that shine with a lot of iridescence and are just so pretty. Once again, I'd love to find some more matching things to go with this. I have seen some earrings that go with this, but this faux opal tends to go for a lot more. So um, the more rare the color of rhinestone, the more expensive, of course, they are to collect. So again, I was glad to pick up this bracelet for again, like $10, um, because that's not what this color of rhinestone goes for. So I will have to keep a lookout for a brooch or earrings or something like that to match this so I can build a set around this bracelet. But so stunning, such a unique colorway. And the last bracelet I have to show you actually goes pretty well with the red brooch and earrings from earlier. It's not an exact match, but it'll do. As long as I don't, you know, lift my bracelet up near my earrings, you won't be able to tell it's not a good match. But this has red rhinestones and red cabochons going on. This is a clamp style bracelet like so. I do have a couple of these in green actually, but I was happy to pick up a red number. And I can't wear bangle bracelets because this part of my hand is just simply too wide. So for me, the clamp, the style that opens is the only kind of style of bangle-y kind of bracelet I can wear. So I was very happy to see one of these available in that booth for 70% off. And then I do have two necklaces to show you from the same sale. This first one is in citrine yellowy gold rhinestones here in a gold toned brass setting. This is just a very classic rhinestone necklace. You can see slightly what it would look like kind of on here. This of course is just costume jewelry. This is the kind of the lower scale down from the kind of more Weiss, Kramer, Juliana sort of pieces. This is unsigned. This is a little bit lesser quality, I would say. The prong settings are not as nicely done. There's more space between the rhinestones, but it's still extremely pretty, especially like the farther away you're standing, the more sparkly and like gorgeous these things become. So it doesn't bother me at all. And again, I collect costume jewelry. I don't even, I don't want fine jewelry. I like costume jewelry. So uh, to me, I'd rather have something bigger and wilder and sparkly like this than have one small diamond. So I'm happy to collect things like this. I actually already do have earrings in my collection that I can wear with this that are the same color of topaz sort of colored rhinestone. So I knew I already had something else I could wear with this. And I just do think it's quite fabulous, especially in fall time. This is such a great color for fall. So if anyone wants to take me to a fancy dinner or an opera sort of thing in fall, if we want to go see Dracula on stage or the ballet Dracula, you know, I could get all dolled up in my autumn finery. And then speaking of Dracula, the other necklace I picked up was this red rhinestone number. Now, especially if we look at the back of this one, I'll show you in the close up. This entire like bib of this necklace is fused together as opposed to having like hinges in between or being a flexible jewelry situation. This is really indicative of it being a lower quality costume jewelry piece, but it's still in like stable condition. It's just nicer pieces would have joints in between and be, instead of being soldered together, this sort of fused kind of bib style is just a little bit less pretty and elegant. Like it doesn't drape over the neck quite in the exact same way. But of course, dark red rhinestone necklace. I wasn't going to leave it behind, especially for like $8 or whatever it came to with the 70% off. So uh, it is quite fabulous and again very vampire looking it would be perfect for any time honestly it would look great with like one of my morticia ish evening gowns and of course i already do have other red rhinestone pieces in my collection that i can wear with this but i am on the lookout for a really simple red rhinestone earring i haven't been able to find anything that was just like a couple of red rhinestones all solid red like this i mean can i wear this with these yes but i feel like the quality of this is so high that it almost makes this look cheaper if you were to wear them together. And this does have AB rhinestones and this doesn't. And that crosses my lines for Matchy Matchy. I know I am a strange child. So those were the pieces I picked up recently in sort of the vintage jewelry haul of the year. I certainly don't think I'll be coming across a sale like that again anytime soon. So I really did indulge a bit, even though I'm supposed to be saving for a house this year. Um, you know, the house will go around the jewelry. So you got to have somewhere to put it. So I'm, I'm working on it, but we'll see how it goes. Thank you as always for watching this video today and indulging me in yet another show and tell. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.